Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Today we're opening up the reporter's notebook to take stock of the past year and recall where we've been and who we've met. And most important, find out what's next. Joining me to talk about the stories he shared this year is associate producer extraordinaire Keith Silva. So we've got a lot to get to. Uh, where do you want to start? Well, Fran, I affectionately refer to this program as the greatest hits. So what better way to start? <laughs> than with a boxer. Lucian Benway is an athletic trainer. He teaches that boxing is more than a sport, it's a metaphor for life, and the gateway to leading a healthy lifestyle. The cool part about boxing is that you, once you learn that presence of mind, that translates to every other part of your life. I think the average person sees two people just coming together and trying to take each other's heads off. What they don't see is the chess match that happens behind that, right? There's a lot of things that happen. In boxing, we've been teaching people to be present for ages because you don't really have another choice, right? Because if you're not present, well then, yeah, well, it's not a good situation for you, right? So it's a very deeper science when it comes to like what actually happens in the ring, but then you have everything that happens outside of the ring. And I think that that's, for me, that's what got me is that there's so much more that happens when you're just training for both physical and mental benefits. The way we bring boxing to people is, hey, this is gonna make you stronger, this is gonna make you faster, this is gonna put you in a better aerobic state, and we're gonna increase your cardiovascular conditioning and make your heart a little bit stronger. In my opinion, there is no better in, like, way to train your whole entire body other than boxing, and which is why we, that's why we do it here, right? And we do it without hitting people, but because it hits so, it checks off so many of the boxes. It's your legs, your hips, your torso, your shoulders, your back. Like everything works, but you also have to have mental clarity and there's a lot to work on technique and focus. And so you get, you get the best of both worlds. Boxing is for everybody and that's, that's why I love it so much. Yeah. In addition to meeting Lucian in the ring, we interviewed him about his work at the UVM Medical Center working with seniors and cancer survivors. Fran, do you remember we had to reschedule that interview? Oh, yeah, uh, that's right. I think he knocked out his two front teeth, and it wasn't in the ring. <laughs> that's right. I think it was in the right. gym or so. It was just an accident. But what a wonderful, uh, compassionate, lovely guy. Yes. We will not share those pictures. Those, <laughs> those, uh, we'll keep those to, our, uh, to ourselves. Um, so you have to take our word for it. Okay, agreed. And the next story is about a beginning farmer who has a bright light outlook on the future. I see what you did there. Ben Tutko <laughs> is a contract grazer. He rents sheep and uses them to control vegetation around solar panels. We visited with Tutko and Ed Von Turkovich, the owner of the solar farm, to take in the sunny agricultural venture. You're looking at about 11,000 panels, and the solar field produces about two and a half megawatts. Two and a half megawatts is designed on this particular project to provide electricity for somewhere between seven and 800 homes. One of the major jobs after you built a solar panel is making sure that you have a plan to control the vegetation. If you don't get a handle on it early, it takes a lot more effort to uh, clear underneath the panels and a lot more equipment, a lot more gasoline which is why this venture, why this experiment we're doing with the sheep is so uh, exciting. My business uh, prides itself on the fact that we have no uh, requirements above what a lawn mowing service would require. Uh, so we bring our own fence, we truck the water in to the site, we don't need water on site. It's full service. What the sheep are doing is not only cutting the grass, they're also fertilizing the grass. They're also aerating the soil with their hooves. Uh, they're putting more nutrients back into the soil than they're taking from it. In this local ecosystem, they're providing services not only for the solar field, but also for the neighbors next door, for the lake that's just a few hundred yards away. It's a win-win for us. A win -win. Hopefully it'll be a win for Ben, and it's certainly a win for the environment. I think the danger may be for us is that there may not be enough bends around to do this once people hear about what a wonderful uh, operation he's got here. So how did you hear about this project, Keith? Um, I heard about it from one of my extension colleagues, Kimberly Hagen. She's the UVM Extension Grazing Specialist. And I wish I could mention all my colleagues in extension who work with me on these stories. Um, I'm honored and humbled to work with them each and every day. I was reminded of the impact that it 
my extension colleagues have on the lives of Vermonters when I visited LSF Forest Products in Fletcher and talked with Tucker Riggs. We're sawing to order for the vast majority of the time that saw is running. As sawmills go, this one is small, but it fills a big niche for local builders. Tucker Riggs owns the business. We are a small softwood sawmill that primarily focuses on sawing timbers for the post of beam industry and rough cut dimensional lumber for homeowner and farmer and anybody else who would, um, needs to build something. In a sense, we are a custom mill. We don't saw for inventory. We don't just make a whole bunch of one by sixes to hope that somebody comes in and buys the one by sixes someday. We're making a living making a profit and we bring our prices up uh, but don't really drop them and I don't feel like I need to you know match Home Depot um, or really a different product. Riggs raised prices during the last year due to demand and because he believes he should support the loggers who work the woods to keep him in business. I raised our prices about 10 percent to compensate you know for the additional revenue that we're bringing in um, knowing that their cost of doing business um, has also increased. We are buying logs from our neighbors that are harvested by our neighbors, by loggers who live in this area. We're turning it into products, whether it be lumber for people to build with in this area in northwestern Vermont. It's truly a Vermont-centered business where the whole cycle is in, in Vermont. As the business grew, Riggs knew he would need help to secure long-term success. We were at a point where I was trying to figure out how to grow, where to grow. I had a pretty good grasp on our numbers as far as our production levels, our profit and loss statement, but I really didn't have you know, the level um, of understanding that I should have. You know, we had built the business from a tiny little portable sawmill and needed to try to get some of that information down on paper. Yeah, we should Helpful. definitely meet and talk about that. Yeah. Um, Riggs contacted well, Chris Lindgren, a forest business educator with UVM Extensions Forest Business. Oftentimes your business can outgrow your ability to understand um, the implications of the accounting and the financials. So at a certain point, a lot of businesses you know, who come to me, that's where they're at. They're like, okay, we've grown. We're trying to understand where are we making profits? How can we grow most effectively more? How can we increase profits maybe without growing a whole lot? And it's been a good time for a lot of folks in the forest and wood products industry um, in Vermont. Demand for the smaller mills definitely spiked. Um, every small miller that I know has been busy um, as they can work as much as they want, which is another important thing I work with businesses on is you need to really understand where your costs are at so that you can make sure that you're charging the right amount of money for your product. Riggs's reason for working with UVM Extension Forest Business is because they know his business. UVM Extension put out information to us saying we are focused on the farm and the forest end of the industry and we want to help you to make that sustainable. If you want to support your neighbors, if you want to see the area that you're living in succeed, then you really should support those um, who are supporting that way of life around you. And that's why I reached out to UVM Extension to get that help and to get that perspective um, to help us um, grow and to help us understand our business better. So before we get to your last story, what are you working on for next year? Well, uh, we got a couple of things on the, uh, on the, on the back burner, the front burner. Uh, we're going to meet a world champion at some point, and there's a very sweet anniversary coming up that, uh, that we'll let uh, folks know about. Well, all right. Love your work. Um, we have time for one more story, and I'm glad you've included this one. The Kosakowski sisters, they were featured in April during the month of the military job. That's right. UVM Extension partners with the Vermont National Guard's Child and Youth Program under the banner Military Kids Vermont. Tessia and Zofia told us about their dad, Sergeant First Class Heath Kosakowski, and what it's been like for them during his deployment. He's very protective and I like that about him because I'm very sensitive when it comes to movies and if I, and he knows when to tell me to like cover my eyes and cover my ears, which I really appreciate. He's a really goofy guy and he's just my dad and I love him. 
this whole deployment thing is really new to us, so we've never gone through it. Um, and it's really hard, and it's like a totally uncharted territory for us. So it's confusing and brings up a lot of emotions, at least for me. It's really different, a little uncomfortable and sad at some times, but I, I know he's there, I know he loves me, and it's just really weird. Like if your best friend is absent from school, except a little bit more than a best friend. <laughs> I'm really proud of my dad. He's been in the Army since he was 17 or 18, I think. He's worked his way up in rankings and important people things that I don't quite understand. One way the sisters have found to cope with their dad's deployment is to make a list of what they want to do when he comes home. Raina's list is very specific. Eat fruity pebbles. That's a kind of cereal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what else? Um, teach him how to play Minecraft. Okay. Okay. Give me one more. Um, and um, have a snowball fight. Nope. If if it's um like if we're in December. Okay. at that time when he comes back. No hugs, no kisses, nothing like yes. that. <laughs> I feel like he has to do what he has to do and when he gets home it's just gonna be better opportunity for us to learn about, I don't know, what his experience was like when he was away. So it's great to see those resilient young women again. And any word about their dad returning home? Yes, Fran, I'm happy to say dad's home. Hi. <laughs> Go ahead, Tess. Your dad is home, my honey. <laughs> I want to thank Amy Kozakowski for allowing us to share this video and inviting us and our viewers along on this journey with her family. That's our program for today. Best wishes for the new year from all of us across the fence. <laughs>